46 year old woman who was found dead in her Westchester Avenue apartment on Monday is remembering her tonight. Forty-six-year-old Selma McLean, affectionately known as Jada to family and friends, was a strong, independent, loving, and wise woman who was loved by many. Her motto was always live, love, and laugh, something she always stood by, not to mention the fact that she was an amazing cook. Most importantly, she was a devoted mother to her daughter, who meant the world to her. The two were close. She was that mother that was at all of her school events, her basketball games, just an overall supportive and proud parent. Get that ball, Jay! Good try, Jay! Good hustle! Her daughter was a promising basketball player who was named the 2019 Spalding National Junior College Athletic Association Division III Women's Basketball Player of the Year and also won MVP honors after her team at Hostos College won the division's championships. Selma couldn't have been more proud. Her daughter was flourishing, and her future looked promising. Things were going well for the mother-daughter duo. At least it seemed that way. An unexpected chain of events would soon occur that would change Selma and her daughter's lives forever. Just before 4 a.m. on March 25th, NYPD responded to an apartment building at 720 Westchester Avenue in the Melrose neighborhood of South Bronx after a woman called and confessed to a murder. Upon entering the third-floor apartment, they would locate a gruesome scene an unconscious and unresponsive adult female, and a woman clutching a bloody frying pan. This is just a very sad story. Police have just released the identity of the 46-year-old victim, and police took into custody a 26-year-old woman. They have not released her identity yet. The victim was identified as 46-year-old Selma McLean, who was sadly pronounced dead at the scene. A suspect was quickly taken into custody by the NYPD, with family members confirming her identity as Selma's own daughter, 26-year-old Skydasia Patterson, who also lived at the home. Initially, the exact details surrounding Selma's murder were unclear. However, the frightening reality of what actually went down inside of that Bronx apartment early that morning will soon be revealed. In a chilling chain of events, Skydasia contacted NYPD and confessed to murdering her mother after beating her to death with a cooking pan in the back of her head. Selma's goddaughter informed police that Skydasia had been in a psychiatric institution since February after recovering from giving birth to a stillborn baby six months ago. She didn't properly heal from it and just wanted everything to be fine, to move on from the entire situation. She was also worried about the breakup with the baby's father. She was released and returned home just one week prior to the murder. In fact, the night before the murder, Selma reached out to her goddaughter, letting her know that Skydasia was hearing voices and had begun speaking in a man's voice before threatening to harm her. Based on her text exchange, Selma was visibly afraid. Apparently, this was not the first time Selma and Skydasia got into a dispute, resulting in her mother contacting police on two separate occasions. A previous attack occurred in February of this year, with Skydasia threatening her mother with kitchen knives. She called the police on herself, and she told officers that the demons and the voices in her head were telling her, your mom is out to get you. Your mom is a bad person. Watch out for her. Despite all of this, Selma was there for her, tried everything she could to support her. After all, this was her baby girl, right? In an interview with the New York Daily News, Selma's close friend and goddaughter provided a bit more background information on Skydasia's past. Skydasia graduated from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania in 2022 with a bachelor's degree in business and planned to go back to school for a master's degree, but then got pregnant, causing her mental health to significantly spiral downhill. Despite how everything went down, Skydasia and Selma were exceptionally close. She stated, she and her mom loved each other. There is nothing they wouldn't do for each other. It just really got into a mental health crisis. Sometimes they had their little quarrels, but that was it. They were inseparable. Her daughter was her whole life. The day before the murder, the pair spent the day together, going to church, and then to dinner at another one of Selma's daughter's homes in Connecticut. Selma's goddaughter said she last saw Selma and Skydasia roughly two and a half hours prior to the murder, after they returned home from Connecticut, and she left their Bronx apartment. She recalled the hours leading up to the murder, saying, She did text me that night that Sky was hearing voices. She said that it was like another person popped out of Sky. She was trying to calm her daughter down. 
That was like the little back and forth between them, and that was the last text I received from my godmother. Not long afterwards, Scott Deja would make the chilling call to 911. Selma's goddaughter heard from a friend later that morning that she was dead and rushed to the building, seeking answers and finding the apartment in disarray. There were cops in front of the building, in front of the apartment, and the door was open when she looked inside. The shoe rack was knocked down, things were on the ground, and there was blood on the floor and on the couch. Through tears, she said that Scott Deja had been acting strange the day before while they spent time with her sister and two friends. And when the murder took place, some of them were just hours away from returning to the apartment to make sure Scott Deja wasn't alone while Selma went to work. She said that she was leaving the apartment that night. Scott told her that she loved her and asked if she can get a hug. That was the last time she spoke to Scott Deja in person. Now she is left with the memory of Scott Deja that is difficult to comprehend. She says no matter what, she will be at every court date. At the end of the day, that's her sister, and she doesn't want her to feel alone. Loved her daughter to death, literally. And it was no, they didn't have no bad blood with each other. This was a simple mental health crisis. And police officers found McLean on her living room floor here at 720 Westchester Avenue just after 3.30 this morning. That's also when they took the 26-year-old women into custody. We spoke to another woman here at the scene who says she is McLean's other daughter. The first woman I spoke to said that the 26-year-old who is now into police custody had been going through a very difficult time. She uh, also said that McLean had sent her a text last night saying her daughter was here hearing voices and have threatened her. I just feel like everybody should take mental health serious, serious enough. And I feel like, you know, that's one thing that people shouldn't turn down. Sorry. In the hours following Selma's senseless and untimely murder, shocked and heartbroken loved ones gathered in front of her Westchester apartment building for a candlelight vigil with purple and white candles to honor her life. They say they don't want Selma or Jada, as she was known to loved ones, to be remembered as just another statistic, but someone who was kind and loving, and most importantly, someone who was always there for her daughter, no matter what. It's been an incredibly difficult week for the family and friends of Selma McLean. Many of the people here knew her as Jada. They say they will remember her for her kindness and her delicious cooking. Curry chicken, yeah. the stew yeah, chicken, the food, period. She was always there for her daughter. She supported her through whatever. She pushed everybody to do better in their life, even if it was, you know, a crisis or something simple. She just, just gave everybody love. In the early hours of Monday morning, police found McLean dead on her living room floor here at 720 Westchester Avenue. Police say that a 26-year-old woman was taken into custody that morning as well. According to several close family members, the 26-year-old was McLean's daughter who lived with her here. They told me she had been suffering from severe mental health episodes and had recently been released from a mental health facility. Everyone here said that the mother and daughter loved each other and they really stressed the importance of taking mental health seriously. If you're going through some type of trauma, you're going through something mentally, physically, if you're overthinking yourself to death about something, go get some help, go confide in somebody. Even if you guys are on bad terms because you just never know, you never know what could happen. Although 26-year-old Skydeja Patterson was taken into custody, she has not faced any murder charges as of yet due to a pending psychiatric evaluation. The case remains ongoing. Oh. <laughs>